Welcome back to The Painting Coach and today we're painting this brand new Primaris Tech Marine. Okay, let's get this Tech Marine painted. So it's a fantastic model, uh, once again from Games Workshop. So uh, in terms of how I've primed the model, I've primed it black and then I've primed it with Mephiston Red Spray uh, over the top, which is why you can see it's not a perfect uh, bit of coverage on there. Uh, I've also gone in and tidied up any bits with Mephiston Red. Now, if you haven't got uh, Mephiston Red Spray, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can just spray in black and paint in with Mephiston Red uh, paint as normal. So the first thing we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of a, a shade down. So what I'm doing is I'm using Basilicanum Grey Contrast Paint, and I've mixed this two parts... Uh, contrast medium uh, with one part contrast paint. Now the Basilicanum Grey has kind of got a little bit of a blue in it uh, and all I'm doing is I'm just using this to paint down all the red bits because what this will do is it'll just give us a nice bit of uh, bit of shade there. So I'm just making sure you can see everything because there's uh, so many kind of different bits of uh, mechanical items getting in the way. So work your way around with this this mix. It is going to be very subtle uh, and then once that's all done and dry we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll start looking at highlighting uh, the model. So make sure it doesn't pool anywhere because we don't want the the grey colour, we just want the darken effect that it's going to give us as we work our way around. So get that done and we'll come back and we'll start lining the armour next. Once we're happy that that uh, Basilicanum Grey is dry, you're going to take some Black Templar Contrast Paint. Um, and I'm not thinning this down, uh, but I'm putting it on the palette just to make sure I haven't got too much on my brush. Uh, let's see if I can show you. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to just black line all the joints. So take your time doing this. Don't worry if you do go over and make a mistake. We'll uh, have an opportunity to clear up later on. This is you know, it's one of the more time consuming parts, but it can be quite fun as well because you'll see the model developing uh, some nice shading before your eyes. So get that done all over, all over the red, and then uh, I think we'll probably make a start on the metallics next. So we can see once we've got all that black lining done that we've got a pretty nice kind of effect on the armour. Uh, once we pop the highlights on later, It'll really help bring it out. Now I'm not going to do the armour yet because what I want to do is do all the other bits around it. Uh, and we'll do the armour last because if we do make any mistakes when we're uh, working our way around it with the vast amount of uh, of, of silver, black and then you know different colours we're going to use then we can always go back and repair it fairly easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, Iron Hand Steel and you can see on the palette it, it thinned it down a little bit with just a little splash of water. don't want to thin it down too much. Uh, and this is just a case of uh, popping it on all those bits that are going to be silver. And like I said, there are quite a few around the model. Um, so if you're not sure, do check the box art. Um, and just patiently work your way around. Don't rush this bit. Um, it is probably one of the more time-consuming parts on the miniature. Uh, but we don't want to make any mistakes. If we do make mistakes, like I said, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we can always uh, go back in. And fix them uh, and where we can we want to use nice broad strokes uh, like this if you need to give it two coats then just pop in and, and you know let it dry and go in and give it another one so work your way around the model get all the uh, all the silver metallics done apologies for the car outside if you can hear that on the, the thing and then we'll uh, come back and shade it all next when all that iron hand steel is dry, we need to shade it with some null oil. So just take a little bit on your brush and again, just going to work around and shade all the areas. Now some of these areas you will, uh, if you look at the box art, you'll see that they are kind of a gold or a brass colour. And I am going to do them that colour, but I'm not going to uh, use extra colours. I'm just going to uh, tint the metallic. So just paint all the silver or all the bits that are going to be a metallic colour uh, the same and we'll create some variation uh, in the tone and the colour uh, later on. So just work your way around, get everything covered with this null oil. It's a little bit shiny there on the camera I see. Uh, and then once that's done leave it dry, make sure it doesn't pool anywhere, leave it dry and then we'll come back and highlight it next. 
once we're happy that that null oil is dry, we're going to go in and we're going to highlight some of the metallics. And the colour we're going to use for this, as ever, is chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Now you can see on the palette, I've not thinned it down, it's already thin enough. So by the time we get a little bit of water pulling through the paper, uh, it's going to be nice and thin. It's designed for airbrushes. And what we want to try and do for the majority of the bits of metal, we want to just catch the shape of the model. And you can see there that straight away it's making this highlight really easy uh, apologies if you can hear the rain outside it sounds like there's a little bit of a, a hail shower going on we've had all sorts of weather over the last uh, last few weeks so there we go work your way around the model getting all the silver highlighted like that um, and again don't forget the bits that are potentially going to be gold as well so where we've got the the skull uh, and things like that then we're going to come back and that's the kind of the silver done and then we'll very quickly do the gold next and then we move on to the black before we uh, think about the armour. That metal is nice and shiny. So let's, let's just quickly do the gold. And there's, there's not much gold on here. So what I'm going to do is get some Nasdreg yellow contrast paint. I'm going to paint this over the areas that are meant to be gold. And you can see straight away it gives you a nice cold gold colour there. If you want something a little warmer, then you can maybe put some Reichlin flesh shade over it just to... Uh, just to warm it up a little bit, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm happy with it as it is uh, You can also maybe put another coat of Nasdreg yellow over it once it's uh, once it's dry But it's a nice quick way of doing gold That saves you on paints and also saves you on time. So check the box out for all the bits that are gold It's mainly the axe uh, part of the axe and then we'll come back. We'll get on with all the black piping next Let's get the black tubing done then there's quite a bit of this and another kind of bits of black as well so uh, just using a bad and black, and I've thinned it a little bit because my mine's quite thick. Uh, so we've got uh, quite a few bits that are black. So we've got a lot of black tubing around the front of the marine. Now, parts of these, there is a lot of yellow tubing as well, like yellow and black hazard tubing, which I will show you how to paint. Uh, but just be mindful of where that is because we don't want to paint that black. We want to leave it red just so that when we go to put the yellow on, uh, it covers a little, a little easier. Uh, we've also got all the weapon casing. So again, just take your time with this, making sure you don't uh, get any on bits you've already finished. Uh, just show you this quickly. Uh, we've got all the ribbing on the joints of the armor. So uh, just show you on the arm here really quickly. Just in there. So again, take your time. If you do get on the red, again, not the end of the world, but taking your time is... Uh, is the way forward and when you get more confident you can probably do it quicker uh, and the last thing we want to do in black is we've got the, the handle of the axe as well so get all that done and we'll come back and give it a good nice little highlight next when we're done with that black it's time to have a look at highlighting it so I'm using Mechanica standard grey and again I've thinned it down a little bit because we don't we don't want it too thick so like the silver there's going to be two ways that we use uh, we use this so firstly we're going to look to catch edges as best we can just by running the the edge of the brush down them and then we're going to got all these pipes now with the pipes on the front we're just looking to catch the raised edges so take your time doing this you could potentially dry brush them if you're very careful uh, but I think it's probably just as quick and tidy to do it that way. So work your way up around all the black. So using the edge of the model where you can. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll make a start on the leather next. Model starting to come together quite nicely now. So the leather is going to be like a, a brown, browny kind of colour. I've got some dried bark on the palette there. Again, just a smidge of water just to thin it down. Um, and we're looking to paint uh, the holster. We've got the belt to do as well. Just take your time, be careful around those bits that you've uh, already finished. And then we've got the uh, the pack on the back there as well. So you may need a second coat, you may get away with one. But get that done and then we'll come back and we'll highlight it next. Highlighting the leather is pretty straightforward as well. I'm just going to take some Gothel Brown. I've thinned this down a little bit just so it flows off the brush a little easier. Uh, but essentially what we're looking to do is exactly the same thing we've done with all the other colours. 
so far where we're looking to catch the edges of the model and that just makes it really easy to give us a nice crisp line highlight so again like i said it's really straightforward hopefully you can see this under there there's lots of bits covering it so getting the right angle for the models are a bit of a fun one so get that done on all leather and then we'll come back and we'll make a start on the lighter bit so things like the the mechanicus cog the pipes that are going to be yellow with black um we're going to use white to kind of base all that and then we'll come back just to tidy it all up ready to get onto the the end straight let's get everything ready for some cool effect then so we're using corax white for this uh, now if you're a regular watcher of the channel you'll know that i thin my corax white down quite a bit um, and that's because it's quite a thick paint yours might be different but just pop a little spot in and what we're looking to do is paint up all the bits that are going to be those lighter colors so everything's going to be yellow uh, so all the kind of the tubes that are going to be yellow we want to paint them up as well and you may get away with just the one coat you may have to uh, put two on there uh, whatever works uh, to get that nice coverage the other thing we want to do as well is we want to make sure that the cog mechanicus uh, symbol on the front here but also the one on the shoulder pad and the one on the backpack have got a nice uh, even coat of uh, the corax white so uh, we're also looking to do other stuff so we're looking to do the eyes on the helmet any uh, lights or lenses we want to get them all based with corax white so work your way around the model if you're not sure which bits you need to do check the box art or you can just wait till the next stage and i'll show you what i've done and you can always pause the video uh, and come back so just work your way around carefully make sure you don't spill it uh, into those other areas you've already finished doing little details like this i think is where contrast paints really do uh, come into their own so uh, what we're going to do is we're firstly going to do the uh, the pipe. So the base we're going to use for the pipe, um, or the tubes I should say, is a Yandan yellow contrast paint. So just all we're doing is just painting that on. And then you can see straight away it gives you a nice vibrant yellow uh, that we can add the black to uh, later on. And that'll probably be one of the last things we do actually. So just get all the tubes that are going to be uh, black and white hazard painted with that Yandan yellow contrast paint. And then we'll do the white next. While we wait for that yellow to dry, we can just take some apothecary white and place this over the, the cogs that we've done. Now, the reason for this is we will uh, obviously be doing half of them in black. But we want to do the white first because it's easier to paint black over white than it is to paint uh, white over black. So get those done and then we'll do the green glow next. For the green glow, we're going to use Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. So this is kind of the eyes and, and the grav pistol. So all we're doing is we're just going to paint it in over, over the white that we've got there. When that dries, it'll give us a nice, nice glow effect. Uh, we'll have to just go in and put a little white dot uh, back in the middle of the eye just to bring the glow back. But that's a really nice, uh, effective way. So you'll have painted some of these uh, lenses white as well so don't be afraid to just go in and use uh, use these colors on them as well uh, maybe maybe mix it up a little bit change uh, change what you use and where and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the uh, cogs next let's first have a look at the uh, the black part on that tubing then so using that uh, some of the abad and black that i've got left on my palette of course i'm using a stay wet palette by uh, red grass games so everything uh, stays nice and nice and wet so what i want to do is i just want to paint some diagonal lines and then just fill them in just like that so you can see it's a nice easy way nice easy effect i'm gonna let that dry this paint's a little thin so i'm gonna let it dry and just go over it but you can see the kind of thing i've gone for uh, on the side there and on this one around the back, just varying the width between the yellow and the black, just to, to make it pop out a little bit. If you want to highlight those tubes, then I've just got a little bit of administratum grey on the palette, a little touch of water to thin it down. I'm using a very small pointy brush here. Uh, the brush size isn't important, it's just having a good tip. And all you want to do is just make sure we're in focus, 
very carefully just pull that down you see it gives a very subtle highlight through through the pipe there so just do that on all the bits of the pipe to highlight it we'll do those cogs next so for the black bits on the cogs we're going to go back to black templar the reason we're using black templar is because we can skip the highlight stage and this this will it's a little bit wetter than perhaps the abaddon black so perhaps gives it a little bit more control as well so what we're looking to do is we're looking to paint the right side of the skull with the black templar as we look at it and then this side of the crux with black templars so be very careful when you're popping that in there so let that dry you may need another coat but come back and then we'll highlight the white next so for the white highlights i'm using a little bit of white scar now this is a new pot so it's it's well shaken but it is fairly fairly thin so i've not had to uh, thin it down too much so all we're looking to do is with the cogs Looking to catch those top edges just to give us that nice highlight. And then what we want to do as well for the eyes, just want a little line because it does just create a glowing effect. Now if it's too stark, you can always take the warp lightning uh, over it and just, just tone it down a bit, which I think I'm probably going to do on those eyes because they're a little bit bright. But make sure you do the other cogs as well uh, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up with the armour next. Okay, so let's make a start on the armour. So I've got some of Fist and Red on the palette. Uh, and I'm this has been on the palette a while, so it will have thinned down a bit. But that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. And the first thing we want to do is you want to give it a bit of a chunky highlight with this Mephist and Red. All the way kind of around all of the armour. Because uh, it will just bring back some of those, those edges uh, where we've kind of done work and we've, we've put the... The Basilicanum grey right at the start and just want to bring some of that kind of brighter red back obviously as it as it dries it'll kind of blend down into the model uh, so don't be too concerned uh, about killing some of the effects that you've already done and I'm going to do this all over the model as well so on the helmet uh, just taking time to leave the dark colors in the recesses and brighten up the armor in general so work your way around doing that and then we'll come back and do some line highlighting you can see using armor fist and red quite uh, in quite a chunky manner has really kind of brought the start to bring the red out so uh, the next highlight we're going to do is evil sun scarlet so we're looking to get a little tighter to the model with this but essentially what we're going to do then is we're just going to look to catch uh, as many edges as we can with that evil sun scarlet because this again is just going to give the effect of really brightening up some of this red and there's going to be some areas which is a little easier to do this you know down the back of the leg there for example nice and straightforward so I'm not going to show you too much of this because uh, the technique is kind of the same uh, to what we've been doing on uh, the rest of the mini we just want to take our time because this is where we're really making things making things pop uh, and really getting that really high quality mini that uh, that we've been striving for all the way through so work your way around with that uh, evil sun scarlet and then we'll come back with a with another highlight we're going to do a bit of a mix for this other highlight because i'm actually going to follow the uh, the heavy metal recipe for the red highlights and i'll talk you through that next so the next highlight, uh, and again, like I said, I'm following the, the heavy metal side. I think it was Paul Norton from the heavy metal team who painted this. And he put on his Instagram uh, the recipe. So if you're not following the heavy metal team on Instagram, get on it because it's, it's fantastic. So this is uh, one part Tau Light Ogre, Ochre even, and one part uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch those sharpest edges. It's a fairly orangey red. So just take your time and work your way around. Now I'm just mindful that it could can be difficult for me to show you uh, some of this on the camera, uh, just to make sure that the focus and everything is in the right place. So excuse me while I kind of look for the right angle that I can uh, can show you. And this is quite a gives it quite an orangey highlight, but we'll temper that down a little bit with the the last. Uh, 
the last step, which is going to be just a little dot of pure uh, towel-like ochre. So work your way around the model, catch all those edges. The aim is to try and get it within the uh, the line of Evil Sun Scarlet you've already put on there. And if I show you that leg, which I've already done, you can see it does pop quite a bit. So work your way around and get it done. Then we'll come back for that final highlight, and then the model's done. The last step I'm going to do, and again, this is optional, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to take some towelite ochre, uh, thin it down quite a bit. Now I'm making sure I've got hardly any on my brush at all. All we want to do with this is we just want to dot it on those kind of areas where, you know, you've got kind of the sharp corners that are going to catch the light. Don't use too much of this because it will kind of make the, make the model a little bit more orange. Um, but it does just add that kind of last little highlight to those kind of sharpest points on the armour. So look at the blocks there. If you do it a little heavy like I did there, just go back in with the, the Evil Sun Scarlet just to to catch it off. Uh, and that's it. That's the model done. So it's worth saying. I'm actually painting this guy as a Blood Angel. Uh, it's for a commission. I'm very grateful for my customer for letting me use this in the tutorial. So I'm going to put a Blood Angel pad on there. Obviously make sure you use the chapter uh, of choice. Base him to match the rest of your army. And of course uh, you will have a look at him on the turntable next. So there we have it. This Tech Marine is done and ready for the table. I really enjoyed painting him. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure that you guys are getting the content you want to see on the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can do by using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon, where you get exclusive access to me, monthly frequently asked questions, as well as some exclusive content. There's Goblin Gaming, where you can get up to 20% off all your wargaming needs. And there's also my Amazon links where you can find some of my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.